Welcome back. In the last video, we created the floornode.h and floornode.cpp uh, files, and you uh, noticed that the int32 and the force inline were giving us the IntelliSense red error lines because they weren't recognized, at least not by IntelliSense, but comp uh, compilation was, was successful. Now, uh, what I did was I regenerated the Visual Studio project files, which um, it's it's uh, very easy to do. Um, I won't spend too much time showing how to do that, um, but if you don't know how to do it, you can look it up on the Unreal Engine forums. But essentially, it comes down to taking your 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 folder, which contains your file, you close out of the engine and you close out of Visual Studio. You delete your saved, intermediate, and binaries folders. Delete those. You right click on your uh, U project, Unreal Engine project. You click Generate Visual Studio Project Files. You allow it to do that. Then you double click on your engine, uh, your Unreal Engine project. It may ask if you want to generate some DLLs. You say yes. You allow that to happen and it opens Unreal Engine. Then you double click on your Visual Studio project, open that up. And right here where it says uh, games and then it shows your project name, you right click, you click set a startup project, that's very important. And then you simply compile and uh, you will um, have recompiled your Visual Studio project. And you should get uh, the recognition of the Unreal Engine uh, macros like force inline and this type def uh, int32. All right, so we have our floor node, and uh, what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to uh, just kind of show us how we can create one of these regular old uh, C++ classes in an Unreal Engine project and a, an efficient way to manage the memory. So here we have procedural room.cpp, and in procedural room, we can go ahead and include floornode.cpp. So let's do an include and let's say floor node dot, I'm sorry, floornode.h. I said .cpp, but I meant .h. We include the header there. And we can go ahead and in begin play, we can create one of these floor node objects. Okay, uh, so it uh, looks like I have two of these open. There we go. So in floornode.cpp, in order to understand when we are creating and when we are destroying a floor node, I'd like to use QE log here. So it's going to be log temp warning text. And we're going to simply say floor node constructor called. Or let's just say created. Floor node was created. And we're going to put this in both the constructors. And we're also going to put this, or, well, not this message particularly, but we're going to put a UE log in the destructor, and we're going to say floor node destroyed. That way we'll know uh, when it's created and when it's destroyed, because if it's not destroyed, then we would have a memory leak. So let's go back to procedural room.cpp, where we included our floor node class, and let's create one. So just under place points on grid, uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, create a floor node. Now, first I'm going to show you what happens if you just create a variable. Um, if you just create a floor node, uh, say let's call it a floor node pointer, and let's call it a f uh, node. And if we just use the old, regular old C++ way of dynamically allocating this memory on the heap, we would say new floor node, like that. Now what happens if we just do it this way. Let's go ahead and compile and see what happens. Um, and the result is when we look at our output log and hit play, you'll see that we have floor node created. Now, right off the bat, begin play is called and it's completed and it's long since been finished. So if we go back and look, begin play has been called and it's been finished. So this ending curly brace has been reached and this, this local variable called node, this pointer, has long since gone out of scope and it's been deleted. However, the memory location that stores the floor node object that we created, it's still holding that floor node object. It hasn't been cleaned up. It has not been deleted. 
And so we have a memory leak. And if you do this enough times in a program, it will crash because you will uh, create so many different uh, objects. So say, say we do this in the tick function, for example, you will be creating so many different little objects. In some cases, they may, might be bigger than our little floor node class. And if you do that enough, you'll run out of heap memory and you'll crash, you'll crash the game. So the regular old C++ way of cleaning up this memory is using the delete keyword and saying delete and you use the pointer name. So you'd say delete node. So if we go back into Unreal Engine and press play, you'll see now that we're creating and destroying the floor node all in begin play. Now this is great. That's, this is a good responsible way to, uh, inst uh, to allocate memory and to deallocate memory. But in games and in large programs in general, it's often, uh, it can be error prone if you're not very careful with the, um, the creation and the destruction of your objects. And so uh, garbage collection is the uh, go-to method to clean up, uh, clean up your memory in Unreal Engine code. However, there are also smart pointers. And a smart pointer uh, allows you to um, dynamically allocate memory and then um, let the smart pointer handle the memory cleanup. So in Unreal Engine, there are shared pointers and unique pointers. There, there's the T shared pointer and the T unique pointer. And these are smart pointers. They are built into Unreal Engine and you can use them. So what we would say instead of using uh, the new keyword like this, and then deleting it is we would use a, uh, for example, let's create a T unique pointer. So um, what we do is we'd say T unique pointer and it's a template type and we're going to use the, the type floor node and we can call this unique, unique node pointer. And what you do is you, uh, you initialize it by calling new floor node inside like this. So what this does is it creates a uh, T unique pointer with the template type floor node called unique node pointer. And that unique node pointer can act like a pointer. It points to this new floor node object that we created. However, when the unique pointer goes out of scope, for example, at the end of this begin play function, then um, automatically this floor node object will be destroyed. And we can test this out by compiling and going back and hitting play. And here we see the floor node was created. Then when in begin play was, was, the end of it was reached, floor, uh, the floor, the unique pointer went out of scope and the memory was automatically cleaned up and the floor node was destroyed. Now a unique pointer can only have a single pointer pointing to this object, which means if you wanted multiple pointers pointing to the same object, it would not allow you to do so. But there are shared pointers which can do just that. So T shared pointer can do the same thing. And, and using it this way, it's going to act the same way. If we compile, you'll see that when we press play, the node is created, the node is destroyed. So this is how we can efficiently use our own custom classes by using the built-in Unreal Engine's shared pointer types. So, uh, so that's great. So we're gonna be doing that in this video as we use our own uh, custom C++ classes. We're gonna be use, using the shared pointer because it allows us to just create a pointer variable that will go out of scope whenever the uh, current block that it's in is reached, the end of it, and it will delete and clean up that memory if there are no other references or no other pointers rather pointing to that memory. The shared pointer is nice because you can have other pointers pointing to this memory and uh, that memory will not be deleted until all of the pointers that point to it uh, no longer point to it. it it's, it's reference counted. It basically counts the number of pointers that point to it and as soon as the number of pointers that point to it reaches zero, well then it will be deleted. So that takes care of uh, memory management for our class. In the next video, we're gonna create our own 
a, a new C++ class called Floor, and Floor is going to handle the actual splitting algorithm, and it's going to use Floor nodes as the data structure to hold the information for each individual uh, rectangle. So we'll continue with that in the next video.